So thank you for the invitation to talk about my implantation technique to reduce the rate of permanent pacemaker after TAVI. My name is Lars Sandergaard. I'm an interventional cardiologist based in Copenhagen, Denmark. So we have seen since uh, TAVI was approved in Europe in 2007, that there's been an expansion of indication for TAVI. And with the recent low risk trials, everyone is expecting that TAVI is going to extend to patient at a younger age and with longer life expectancy. That's going to open up for new challenges compared to patient at an older age with limited life expectancy. And one very important issue is the risk of conduction abnormality. We used to say that a new onset conduction abnormality and a permanent pacemaker was a benign complication. It would not affect the outcome for patient undergoing TAVI. But I think we now have quite robust data showing that this is associated with a higher risk of hospitalization for heart failure and also for cardiac mortality. So as we're going to address a patient with a longer life expectancy with TAVI as an alternative to surgical aortic valve replacement, we need to improve uh, the risk of conductance abnormality. One way is of course, uh, the selection of transcatheter heart valve because some of these valves have a lower rate than others. We have seen balloon expandable valves, but also valves with a cylindric stent frame such as the portico or the Navitor valve has a lower rate of permanent pacemaker. But you can also do something in the cat lab while you're implanting uh, the TAVI valve. So I think most sites started out with a C-arm in an LAO cranial projection, or you can call it a traditional tree cusp co planet view. But now there's been a move to an IO caudal projection. And the difference between these two view is that if you're working in a IO caudal view, you're not only going to have the tree or the cusp aligned with the imaging plane, but you're going to have no parallax on your delivery system. And also, the left ventricular alpha tract is going to be elongated. So these three factors mean that you have a much better understanding how deep or how high are you during your implantation. So you're not really aiming for a high implantation when you're looking at your screen, it's the same depth, but in real life, you're going to have a true height of what you actually see compared to if you're working in a traditional LAO cranial projection, where you get fooled, you think you're high, but you're actually in a lower position. So what most people will do today is from the CT scan, instead of identifying this tree cusp co planet view, will identify the CR angulation where the left and the right coronary cusp is overlapping, what we call the cusp overlap view. And when the valve is in place across the aortic valve and you're ready to start deployment, you go to this right left coronary cusp overlap view. Because this cusp overlap view is very close to what I discussed before, to this REO call projection where you have, as I said, the triotic cusp, the delivery system aligned with the imaging plane and the elongation of um, the left ventricular alpha tract. And I think we've seen quite a few reports out now that this is going to reduce the risk of new onset conduction abnormality. We have done a study in Copenhagen where we compared before we went to this technique, the tree cusp co planet view with now the cusp overlap view using the portico valve matched these two cohorts and could see that with the cusp overlap view, we could actually reduce the rate of new permanent pacemaker with 50%. So I hope that is going to be useful for you at your site when you're treating these patients with TAVI. Thank you. Thank you.